Good evening, everybody. This is uh, 15 Minutes with Uncle Russ coming to you live from X Cafe in Koh Samui, in the beautiful, beautiful country of Thailand. Welcome. So nice to see you again. I always look forward to this time of the week. I know it's such a short little chat, but I really treasure these moments. So thank you so much. How's your week been? Good, hey? Wow. I tell you what. It's been such a productive week. We've been spending a couple of extended weeks putting ceilings and all kinds of stuff, but I can quite honestly say <laughs> the project is finished and I've got strict instructions from my beloved wife Zoe. No more projects. So it'll just be like, what do they say? Upkeep and maintenance. Eh? Good, eh? Okay, so today's story, lovely little story, once again from uh, Aesop's Fables. And uh, let me just make sure I've got my, my volume turned to full. Aesop's Fables. And this one is called The Sheep and the Pig. Can you see that? The Sheep and the Pig. <laughs> this is quite an interesting one. Anywho, so I'll read us the little story. One day, a shepherd discovered a fat pig in the meadow where his sheep were pastured. He very quickly captured the porker, which squealed at the top of its voice the moment the shepherd laid hands on it. You would have thought to hear the loud squealing that the pig was being cruelly hurt, but in spite of its squeals and struggles to escape, the shepherd tucked his prize under his arm and started off to the butcher in the marketplace. Oh. The sheep in the pasture were much astonished and amused at the pig's behavior and followed the shepherd and his charge to the pasture gate. What makes you squeal like that? asked one of the sheep. The shepherd often catches and carries off one of us, but we feel but we should feel very much ashamed to make such a terrible fuss about it like you do. That is all very well, replied the pig with a squeal and a frantic kick. When he catches you, he is only after your wool. But he wants my bacon. <laughs> it was a sound effect that they wrote in. Sorry. So, the moral of the story is this. It's easy to be brave when there is no danger. Eh -heh. How's that? Hey, is, don't you find that with people in general? You'll be busy doing something and suddenly they'll tweak onto what you're doing and decide what's going on. But they actually have no background information. They just respond to what they can see and hear. But they don't really know what's really going on. Eh? True, eh? I know, I know. So this is what Matthew 5, 11 to 12 says. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for your great is your reward in heaven so that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, so when, when we come under trials and tribulations, we're blessed. I mean, it's not my fault, not your fault. It's just we are blessed because the Bible says so. Matthew 26, verse 35. Now listen to this one. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples, Jesus, we in this with you. We will stick with you closer than a brother. I've got your back. Don't you worry. <laughs> Sometimes those that have your back, it's true. Because then they can find a place to put the dagger in. <laughs> ah, then Luke 22, 54 to verse 62. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house, but Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them, and a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him. 
but he denied it. He denied him saying, woman, I do not know him. After a little while, another saw him and said, you are one of them. But Peter said, man, I'm not. Then after about an hour passed, another confidently, confidently affirmed saying, surely this fellow was also with him, for he is Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately while he was still speaking, the, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned to, and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went up and wept bitterly. You see, sometimes we're only in for the wool, but not for the bacon. Yeah, because we're sheep, you know. We don't squeal, we don't make a noise, because the shepherd is going to take care of us, so we can just chillax and do nothing and go about being sheep <laughs> and yet you know what really amazes me is this and you, you really need to take note of what i'm about to say people are, are being denied their freedom to follow jesus we have total freedom we can serve him love him minister evangelize we can do whatever we want to but what do we do with that privilege? Others are ostracized from families and communities because they've chosen to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord, Master and Savior. Families will even kill their own people, their own children, their own spouses if they decide to follow Jesus. Others still are imprisoned because of their faith. We have total freedom and yet it's such a schlep to go and fellowship with uh, fellow believers, to go and pray meetings, whatever it is that we, you know, we Christians do. Oh, you know, life is so hard. <laughs> Man, we are a bunch of wussies sometimes, honestly, yes. And then still some are persecuted to the point of death and not being able to get work or they can get a job but because of their faith they'll get a lesser rate and they get treated differently. And of course the extreme of all of that is others get executed because of their faith. You know, we bump our knee and oh I can't get to church this week, I've got a sore knee. What? <laughs> I've got a cough. Or my child's sick or we got some excuse that is just let's let's be honest if i go back through this list denied freedom to follow jesus ostracized from families and communities imprisoned persecuted and executed that cough doesn't count for much all the other little functions that we have to, have to go to and surprisingly we make sure that the function is the time that the church service is it's quite odd huh? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just taking a, a flyer over here and I don't understand what's going on. Maybe. And yet, we find time to backbite each other, gossip, slander. Fellowshipping has become all but a burden for some. Reading the Bible, and in some cases, it's so considered yesterday. Oh, you know, it's so old fashioned reading the Bible. I'll just have somebody send me these voice notes or little things, you know, to remind me, and then I'll just listen to the audio, and that, that's me. We even sit in teachings, and we don't follow it in the Bible. We're assuming that the person teaching us is teaching us the truth. Surprise! Eh? Many are willing to indulge in a form of godliness and spirituality, but in reality, they are far from God. Oh, you know, my brother, I am so spiritual. Really? So, what do you do? And then they go to great lengths to explain how spiritual they are. But in, in actual fact, we could be so far from God. You know, the, there was a prophet that said, these pe people do honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, for they fear me, or they follow me, 
because of the teachings of man. We must follow God because we love him, because he loved us first. I said, and he sent his son to die for our sins. I mean, come on. We spend copious amounts of money on ourselves and our indulgences, but when it comes to the church, we will say, oh, don't worry, brother, God will provide. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, we can have faith for a lot of stuff, but ultimately God uses people to bless people. And then, then the person will go, oh, oh, that's quite a big thing that you're doing, eh? but praise God, He will provide. What happened to your pocket? <laughs> you got short arms and deep pockets, maybe. I don't know, then it's difficult to get your shekels out. Not your heckles, your shekels. Eh? Be careful, don't, don't start the heckle thing. Eh? And then James 2, 14 to 18. I think that kind of brings it all together. Faith without works is dead. What does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to him, Depart in peace, be warmed and be filled, but you do not give him the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. There's a fine balance between having faith and works because they work together. It's like, imagine if my right hand was faith and my left hand was works and I want to clap but I only use Maybe the sand. That's not clapping, that's waving. That's clapping. It takes both hands. It takes both faith and works. So for some that have huge amounts of faith, and praise God, I mean, it's incredible that you walk by such faith. But it's also going to take some works. Or maybe you're so driven by the works thing that you have no faith. And you know, you'll make the plan. Make a plan, make a plan, make a plan, make a plan. And then one day there's no plan. But God says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. What about if we can just jump into that river, the river of God, and flow with His plans and purposes and the destiny that He has for our lives? Wouldn't that be so cool, eh? What do you think? Did you like that? Huh? Are we sheep or are we the pig? Mm. Of course we sheep. And we will follow. But we mustn't just follow blindly and not... You know, the Bible says this. Don't withhold when it's in your power to do good. Don't without. Stop being selfish. Stop being so tight-fisted. And I'm not talking about your money, so relax. <laughs> oh, he's talking about money again. No, I'm not. I'm talking about your time. I'm talking about your blood, your sweat. You know, when it takes effort to do something, don't just leave people and stand and say, Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. God bless you, my brother or my sister. Do something. Yes. How's that? Eh? You still love me? Because uh, I still love you. You can say what you want to, you can do what you want to, but I will still love you with the same measure that God showed me grace to love me. I will do everything that I can to love you back, even though you may not like me. Yeah. Is that cool? Did you like that? <laughs> the sheep and the pig. So my friends, my beloved brothers, sisters, those that don't know Christ yet, have a blessed, blessed, blessed Friday evening. Yes. Have a fantastic Saturday. Spend time out with the family, you know, get get a little bit of shindings going. Oh, 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 this this Sunday we're celebrating eight years since 
the church was established in Kosovo by Herman and uh, Charmaine Grunling. Yes. And then, so we're going to celebrate it. Eight years, eh? Whew. Nearly double figures. Yeah, but praise God, you know. Praise God that He places vision in people's hearts. And they go out on a limb and they do what they have to do until they stop doing and God moves them on to the next part of His purposes. You see, He will never move us on to the next thing until we complete the current thing. Yes. But we don't like that. Oh I, don't, oh, oh, I don't like doing this anymore. Well, as soon as you start loving what you're doing, then God says, okay, Russ, it's next one. And then, of course, the baton was handed over to Jean and um, Charlene. Yeah. Until they were finished. And then they went on to other things that God's doing in their lives. What are you doing? What am I doing? Am I fulfilling the purposes that God has for me? Or am I just a sheep in for the wool? But I'm not, I, I don't have skin. You know, there's a, a saying that they use in the world. Have you got skin in the game? In other words, has it cost you and will it cost you? Okay. So, have a fantastic weekend. Get to fellowship on Sunday. Spend some time with the brothers and sisters. And remember... If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This is Uncle Russ signing off until next time. God bless and goodbye.